Hey everybody, my name is Lauren. Um, I just want to first say thank you, John, for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure to share the stage with you. He does so much beautiful fucking work here and you've really just opened up a space for really dope discussion, so thank you. Yeah. Um, I first want to say I do not go by fuck your diet anymore because I feel like it's a little abrasive. So I removed, my, when I first started my blog, it was fuckyourdiet.blog. I actually pay for it, so it's actually still <laughs> fuckyourdiet.blog, but I changed my Instagram because I don't want to feel like, I don't want anyone to feel attacked by my, you know, username. So, yeah, so what I'm going to talk to you guys today about is diet culture, why it's important, what, um, why it's, why, what it is, why it matters, and what we can do to fight it. So, first I want to say that this topic is really nuanced. There's a lot to it, and you can't really get to all of it in 15 minutes. I also want to say that I have no intentions of making anyone feel bad about what they're doing. Um, this is just my experience and how diet culture, how the society we live in um, that really praises thinness, how that affected me and how I see it affect a lot of other people, especially women. Um, so my first, first thing I want to do is have everyone raise their hands. Can I have everybody raise their hands, please? Yes, thank you. Okay, and keep your hand raised. Okay, now when I say diet, I mean if you, um, voluntary weight loss, if you've tried to lose weight. So keep your hand raised if you've um, been on a diet. Okay, now keep your hand raised if you've been on maybe more than one diet. Okay, now raise your hand back up and uh, keep your hand raised if you um, had, mes had messages as a child that thinness was ideal. Okay, cool. Now keep your hand raised and say um, if you judge someone for their weight. Yes, had opinions about somebody based on what they weighed. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Me too. Yeah, and... Um, for me, my experience was that as a child, I got messages that my body was really important, that I needed to be thin, um, and I needed, because that, I, no one told me this explicitly. I just got implicit messages that if I was thin, I was going to have more friends, I was going to have a higher status, I was going to be successful, and I was just going to be all around better person if I just, like, was thin, right? And, um... Really what, that, what ended up happening was my obsession with my body. I spent, years, um, I spent years really just trying to obtain this body that I thought was gonna give me what was, I thought was gonna give me something really amazing. And so eventually I got sick of it. I like, it really took over a lot of my, my time, my energy, my money. I just spent a lot of time and I just forgot fucking, I was like, why am I spending my whole life thinking about my body? There's so much more, so much more I could do. Um, and and then I, you know, I, I talked to a therapist about it. I was actually in therapy for another reason. I ended up act, like casually mentioning it and realized that it was just like fucked up and I didn't want to live that way anymore. I walked out of there like, fuck this shit. Like, how can I get out of this like diet bullshit? And, um, and then when I started to get free, I saw that everyone was still like posting before and after photos or talking about their, their whole 30 or their keto diet and, and really, I saw that the messages were being perpetuated in a way that, um, that like affects all of us in a way that we don't see, you know? Um, so I want to talk about it. So yeah, diet culture. Um, Christy Harrison, she's a woman that does food science. She talks about uh, diet culture as the, what is worshiping thinness, equates thinness with health, health, equates thinness with moral virtue, promotes weight loss as a means of, higher, of attaining higher status, Disproportionately harms women, femmes, trans folks, people in larger bodies, people of color, and people with disabilities. Uh, so, and really what that does is damages their mental and physical health. And so this becomes a social justice issue. The fact that people in larger bodies are being disproportionately displaced and marginalized and discriminated against based on their body size. It, um, it's fucked up. I mean, I think we all are fighting against racism, we're fighting against homophobia, we're fighting for rights against trans people, but this topic is just kind of going under the radar. So, this is a, this is a, um, art done by my, done by my partner, it says, I'm in an abusive relationship with myself. Why diets fail? Okay, so the first um, little text I'll show is the uh, common cycle of dieting, what I experienced, restriction, physical and emotional deprivation, binging, and then it leads to guilt and shame, a desire to be thin, and then you go in the cycle again. 
So what's important to understand here is why diets fail. If they worked, maybe we wouldn't have to have this discussion. Maybe everyone would be thin, that would, everyone would have that ideal, and this wouldn't be a problem. But the thing is, is that 95% of diets fail. 95% of people who are on a diet end up gaining the weight back within three years. So, um, and this reason is because human biology is just not, um, it doesn't support voluntary weight loss. And a few reasons, obsession, evolution. Obsession, there's a, do, a study done that I find really uh, interesting, done by Ansel Keys. He did, he got 16 guys to go on a semi-starvation uh, diet of 1,600 calories. And what he found is that these people became obsessed with food. They took, he took out food from people, or gave them a 1,600 day calorie. They didn't think about, they didn't care about their jobs. They didn't care about their relationships. They didn't care about anything except food. And I think that was an experience for me. You know, I, when I, when you, I saw that cookie, but I wasn't allowed to eat that cookie. I really wanted it. And, um, and then the evolution, uh, evolution, the gorging gene. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of the sa book Sapiens by, um, by what's his name? Yuval Noah Harari. I'm reading that right now. The, um, uh, the. I can't remember the name of the book, but it's called Sapien something something. The instinct, uh, he talks about the gorging gene briefly. This is a book on evolution. He briefly touches on this. The instinct to gorge on high calorie foods is hardwired into our brain. A woman 30,000 years ago in the Stone Age, her des uh, dessert was fruit. And if she saw a fruit tree, she was going to eat as much as she, as she could on that fruit tree because she didn't know when she was going to get fruit again. And that is hardwired into our brain. So we're all... Uh, drawn to high calorie food and so when we try and keep ourselves away from it it ends up being difficult to say the least um if we're really i mean i'll get to it later but self-control what they found is people that have even the highest self-control they it has nothing to do with whether or not they can say no to food and what they found is the people that actually can say no to food are the people that haven't dieted those people are better at saying no to the cookie than the person that has been dieting for years um, so why diets are harmful? Yo-yo dieting, which is really common, if 95% of diets fail, then that means that most of these people are experiencing weight cycling, which is um, associated with heart disease, cardiovascular disease, and other long-term illnesses. Eating disorders, 25% of people who, develop eating who diet develop eating disorders. Health consequences. Stress, self-esteem, sex drive, binge eating, depression, memory loss, executive functioning performance lowers, and mortality rates goes up. Um, so it affects people in larger bodies the most. I wanted to talk about children, and I wanted to talk about people in larger bodies, because these are the people that it's really fucking up. But I had to make this shorter. So I chose people in larger bodies because they really are getting discriminated and marginalized in super high rates, and they deserve to be acknowledged here. So in this picture, by Hot Cup of Cocoa on Instagram. In what world is your body, is my body your concern? So BMI misidentifies the need for intervention. I don't know about you, but oftentimes for me, I, if I felt bad about myself, I would check my BMI by body mass index online and I would see, am I healthy? And this BMI would put me in this healthy range or this overweight range and then I would decide, okay, I'm good. And what the research has found is that the BMI misidentifies people almost the majority of the time. 50%, 51% of people in the overweight range get misdiagnosed as met metabolically unhealthy. Um, so that means that people are getting diagnosed with, they're assumed unhealthy based on their BMI range, and what they found is that 50% of these people are actually healthy. Um, and that 20 23% of people are overlooked in the underweight range. So a lot of people who are thin, they're assumed to be healthy when in fact they're actually really unhealthy, which I find really interesting. I mean, these people are getting not treated, um, not treated in the healthcare system because a doctor will look at your body and say, oh, you look healthy because you're in a thin one, when really maybe they're suffering from some sort of disease, but it's just overlooked. And then people in the higher BMI range denied healthcare. So yeah, I mean, this is one of the biggest issues. Um, they're not, they don't have access to healthcare um, based on their body size. That, just because they're assumed unhealthy, so the uh, insurance doesn't want to cover them, but really if, you know, maybe they, if 50% of them are actually healthy, how many people are getting not treated based on their body size? 
And then many people in large bodies avoid seeking health care based on shame and guilt. People, uh, large, people in larger bodies get discriminated against the most in doctor's offices, so they don't go to the doctors. Um, one of my... One of my PowerPoints is missing, but we're going to talk about Hayes. Hayes is a weight. Uh, okay, so Hayes is a weight-centered, or kind of goes against the weight-centered approach of public policy that's now, you know, upheld in most mainstream places or all doctor's offices. Hayes is a different approach, and it kind of goes against this weight-centered approach into a more weight-inclusive approach. And so it shows the lack of connection between weight and health. That's what Hayes' science is behind. Um, and it accepts, it's really its mission is to accept and respect all bodies, encouraging health and well-being for people at all sizes, promoting eating in a way that is created on an individual basis. I think what people fail to acknowledge is that all bodies are different. There's such thing as body diversity. And we look at to treat every single body the same, and it um, ends up hurting people. So recognize that health is more than just the physical aspect. How am I doing on time? Um, people with higher BMIs. This is really interesting. I really like, this is where my passion came from. These facts. Three minutes? Okay. So I'll briefly scan through these. People with B higher BMIs live longer than people with lower BMIs. Um, people can get help. People find become healthier, metabolically healthier, if they change their diet, if they change what they put in their body and their movement, regardless as if they lose weight. Regardless of if they lose weight. So this is my last slide. So eating, intuitive eating, this is where really I'm like super passionate about. This is where I found my freedom. When I stopped obsessing about what I put in my body, I stopped thinking about it and my body took care of me. I learned to trust that my body could tell me what I needed. As children, we knew what we wanted. As children, if the children's full, they stop eating. If they're hungry, they eat. If they want, you know, if they're more hungry one day, they'll eat more that day. And, and what I found is when I stopped food policing myself, when I stopped obsessing about my food, when I stopped taking into account the fact that the world thought that my body was better as thin, then I could, my, I could get in tune with my body. I could get in tune with the innate hunger cues that... Um, that my body is capable of finding. And so for me, before, what I'll finish with this, before I could not stop thinking about cookies. When I was on diets, just for years, I just like was obsessed with cookies, okay? And when I stopped dieting, I can walk into a place and allow my, and I don't like, I don't obsess about cookies anymore because my body knows that I can have the cookie if it wants it to. And so what I think people are scared of is that, the, oh my God, I'm not gonna be healthy if I don't go on a diet, but what the reality is, is that if we trust ourselves, and we trust our bodies to take care of ourselves, then they will, t for me, it's like, I really love salads now. I'll go to Joma and buy a really good Greek salad because my body craves that now. And before, when I wasn't in touch with myself, it just didn't have that. So yeah, body trust, no more food policing, and respecting your hunger. And movement and honoring your health is kind of the last pieces of it because it's hard to, um, it's hard to connect with those without, like, the need or want to lose weight so when I, I stopped going to the gym for a year because I wasn't because I always thought about losing weight when I went to the gym and now I go to the gym because it wakes me up it gives me energy so yeah that's that's all for me if you want to I'm into ah there we go so if you want to find me it's um instagram no more diets please and my blog is fuckyourdiet.blog One more round of applause for Ms. Lauren Johnson, please, beautiful.